Whereas a conventional light microscope, when you look down it, there's a lot of excess fluorescence that gets in the way. And the way the confocal works is it removes this excess fluorescence and you get a really nice, clear image. Instead of using a white light source, like a light bulb, to illuminate your sample, you're using lasers of various colours to illuminate your sample. You're also able to optically slice through a sample, which you can reconstruct to produce three-dimensional images. And just something you just couldn't see with any with a conventional microscope. And that's what makes Confocal so, so good. We photograph patients in our clinical studio, on the ward, in theatre. We wear scrubs, we wear face masks. Equipment's uh, wiped down with alcohol gel. I've never been phased by any form of um, surgical procedure. You switch off, you become totally into, right, I need to record this, how am I going to do it? What's going to be the best process? I need to change this on the camera. What's in front of you with me, it doesn't matter what's in front of me, I, I've got to get a picture and I photograph it. I've met quite a lot of patients and some of their stories are incredibly remarkable to think what they've gone through and survived and to, to, to see that it's amazing. A scanning electron microscope is a microscope which uses electrons for, for probing on the surface of a sample. What you want is a replica of that surface so that when your primary beam electrons hit that surface, lots of electrons are generated. The electrons hit the sample, collide with the electrons on the surface of the sample, giving off reflected electrons or secondary electrons. And then the electrons hit the window and knocks out a photon of phosphor. And what we actually convert electronically is a photon image. The lowest magnification I can get on this is probably about 40 times. And the highest mag I can go up to 3 million on this one. I think a good image must have a combination of being good to look at and scientifically informative. Specimen preparation is of uh, great importance. For the best results, then sections at 1 micrometer or 1.5 micrometers, what are called semi-thins, reveal far more detail. Contrary to what you might think, you need very long exposures, not very short ones. Usually four or six seconds exposures on this then you may have to take photographs at different depths through the specimen, use software to stack all the images so that you get a, a much clearer image of what the thing really looks like. But most of the colours that, that you see in images are just the consequence of the laws of physics rattling around in the microscope.